In this class, we will discuss about uh, riveted joints. So, before discussing about uh, what is meant by rivet and riveting process and types of joints, all those things, let us understand some brief introduction regarding that uh, the riveted joints. Often, a small mission components often a small mission components are joined together to form a larger mission parts to form a larger mission parts so designing of joints is most important as that of mission components because a weak joint may spoil the utility of a carefully designed mission part especially okay a mission component because a weak joint may spoil the utility of a carefully designed mission part that's why the design of joint is very very important so if we talk about that mechanical joints generally we have two types one is the permanent joint and one more is the non-permanent joint so if we talk about the permanent joints so we have two categories one is that welded joints as well as the riveted joints these are the permanent joining process okay permanent joining process if we talk about that non-permanent joints okay the non-permanent joint can be assembled and disassembled without damaging the components like the temporary fastenings is nothing but a screw joints okay the bolt and nuts we can assemble and whenever we want to get disassemble that component we can disassemble okay and also we have keys as well as the couplings these are the temporary joining process this is about the brief introduction regarding that the joining mechanical joints as well as the some joining process the design of the joints if we talk about the riveted joints a rivet is a short cylindrical rod a rivet is a short cylindrical rod having a head of a tapered tile having a head of tapered tile you can see this is a rivet okay a cylindrical rod having this is a cylindrical rod having a head having head and a tapered tapered tile the main body of the rivet is called as a shank the main body of the rivet is we'll call it as a shock and this is the rivet as well as the its part okay it's our parts if you see here this is how the riveting process will going to die okay there is a backing up bar there is a die okay here we want to establish a tight leak proof joint between these two plates okay so at the time this is a rivet okay this is a die so th this die is used as per our requirement the nature of exterior okay the look that that is a die we can use this is when due to some external force so we'll establish a tight leak proof joint between these two the rivets okay this is about the riveting process so depends upon the manufacturer and depends upon the requirement we can go with the hot as well as the cold riveting process all those things not now it is not required as per your syllabus point of view Okay, next we'll discuss some more important topic which is based on the caulking as well as the coldering process. So why we need to do caulking as well as coldering process? So before discussing the caulking and coldering, let us understand that why we need to do that caulking as well as coldering process. There is some uneven plates or scale on plates, the fin performed in punching the rivet holes and other causes. Okay, other causes prevent the plate from coming into close contact to make a leak proof joint in boilers or pressure vessels. Okay, these are the causes. Okay, these causes especially to prevent a close contact between the plate. Okay, contact between the plates. So that, that's why there is this chances of getting the gases will get leak or the liquid will going to get leak from the, the pressure vessels as well as the boilers. To avoid those things will go for the caulking as well as the coloring process. First, we will discuss the caulking process. Now you can see this is the caulking process. A riveted joint may be made a tight against leakage of gases and liquids. Okay, the riveted joint may made tight against the leakage of the gases as well as the liquid by caulking. How? Okay, by forcing the edge. Okay, you can see this is a setup. By forcing the edge on the cover plate, on the cover plate against the main plate. On the cover plate against the main plate okay so this caulking is done by hammering a blunt noise tool a blunt noise tool this is a caulking tool called caulk revive and caulked plate blunt noise tool against the hedge it is a good practice to call not only the plate but also around the rivet 
okay pivoted as shown in this figure pivoted as shown in this figure next we will discuss about full ring process now you can see this is a setup we have the full ring tool there is a main plate and cover plate and this is a rivet okay a more satisfactory way of making the joint testing and tight is known as a full ring it is similar to that caulking except that okay the thickness of the full ring tool at the end is equal to that the plate at the end is equal to that plate but here in caulking it is not like that okay this is called a full ring process next some of the important assumptions made while designing the riveted joints these are the some of the important assumptions okay a, a load is distributed among the rivets according to the shear stress the second one is the tensile stress is equally distributed over the suction of a metal between the rivets that is also very very important otherwise the failure will going to take place the crushing stress is equally distributed over the projected area of the rivets that is also very important and here there is no bending stresses in the rivet okay so keep this a point in our mind before designing the rivets or pressure vessel the rivet completely filled hole after it's driven okay that is also very important the friction between the adjacent surfaces does not affect the strength of the joint okay this is also very important assumptions made while designing a riveted joints for a pressure vessel or a boiler next we have the types of rivets so here generally we have two types one is the lap joint and one more is the butt joint if you talk about the lap joint now you can see this is a setup we have there is a rivet and there is a two plates one is a cover plate as well as a main plate here okay if you talk about that uh, both are a main plate so here so the inserted the rivets are inserted on the overlapping portion now you can see this is a overlapping portion a single or multiple rows of the rivets are used to give the strength of the joint okay here a single riveted joint so we can go with a single multiple rows to increase the strength of the rivet depending upon the number of rows and riveted joint may be classified as a single riveted lap joint or double riveted or triple riveted lap joint etc okay now you can see this is a single riveted lap joint and this, this is a double riveted lap joint okay this is a riveted lo rivet locations okay so you can the, the red dots which are in, denoted as a rivets this is a single riveted lap joint so where we inserted this overlapping portion here also here we have that now you can see this is the double riveted lap joint or chain arrangement you can see this is a double riveted lap joint okay to increase the strength of the joint we can you go for the double riveted lap joint okay so next we have the uh, butt joint so if you talk about the butt joint so in this type of joint the plates are brought into each other without forming any overlap will brought into each other without forming overlap the riveted joint may be formed between each of the plate and one one or two cover plates now you can see this is a main plates and this is a cover plate okay these are the two rivets okay so to join these two main plates we need cover plate one or two cover plates okay so how the depending upon the number of cover plates the butt joint may be a single strip or double strip butt joint okay now you can see this is a single strip butt joint here we have two main plates or so one cover plate this is the rivets here we have two cover plates okay this is a double strip okay this is the nature of the riveting process which is done okay which is done in butt joint okay next we have some of the important terms used in the riveted joints a few parameters which are required to satisfy the arrangement of the rivets joint as follows the first one is the pitch okay you can see this is a distance between the two corners of the, uh, the consecutive rivets two corners uh, two centers of the consecutive rivets in a single row okay this is a single row two consecutive rivets in a single row usually we will denote it as a p small p defined as a pitch next we have the back pitch this is the shortest distance between the two successive rows in a multiple riveted joint okay the shortest distance between the two successive rows in a multiple riveted joint okay this is denoted as a back pitch called p suffix b okay usual symbol is pp okay so the diagonal pitch the diagonal pitch is the distance between the centers of the rivet in adjacent rows okay in adjacent rows in the sense zigzag okay zigzag riveted joints okay this is called as a pd the diagonal pitch okay the diagonal pitch so that we will call it as a okay the diagonal pitch next we have that margin or marginal pitch 
okay you can see this is the distance between the two centers of the rivet poles to the nearest edge of the plate poles to the nearest edge of the plate usual symbol is m you can see this is the m okay so this is a margin or marginal pitch okay next we have some more very important topic which is based on the failures of riveted joints the failures of riveted joints in four manners one is by tearing of the plate at edge by tearing of the plate across the row of the rivets okay the shearing of the rivets and crushing of the rivet plates crushing of the rivet plates okay this is a failure will going to take place if we talk about the tearing of the plate now you can see this is a riveted okay the arrangement of the riveted joint okay this is a failure path in tension okay the nature of the load is tensile okay so here this is a rivet okay the red dots which are indicated as a rivet so here if the force is too large okay whatever the force which is acting on this particular joint is large the plate may fail in tension along the row plate may fail in tension along the row this is the failure path in tension failure path in tension due to this axial load next we have one more very important uh, the failure the tearing of the plate at edge okay you can see this is why the tearing of the plate will going to takes place at edge okay if the margin is too small if the margin is too small okay the fail the, the plate may fail as shown in figure okay this is how the failure will going to takes place when the nature of the load should be like this okay if the margin is too small the plate may fail as shown in this figure to prevent the failure a minimum margin we need to maintain that small m is equal to 1.5 times of d small m is equal to 1.5 times of d usually provided okay so the d is nothing but a diameter of the rivet next we have one more very important the failure which is the shearing failure the shearing failure is nothing but a okay the rivets or rivets or in a single shear lap joint or in a double shear okay in double strip but joint considering one pitch length considering one pitch length so this is a, some tangential forces which is acting on these particular plates okay so due to that the shearing failure will going to take place okay so here we have single shear as well as the double shear if you talk about the single shear lap joint and the double shear in double strip but joint okay considering one pitch length by considering one pitch length okay so this is about the shearing of the rivets shearing of the rivets with respect to this the failure yeah, failures of the riveted joint next we have the crushing of the riveted joint the crushing of the rivets which are if the bearing stress if the bearing stress on the rivet is too small too large bearing stress on the rivet is too large the contact surface okay the contact surface between the rivet and plate may get damaged okay this is how the damage will going to take place okay the contact surface between the rivet and the plate may get damaged okay so this i have referred uh, from the version to me iit karakpur okay this material i have written i have taken from that uh, version to me iit karakpur okay so this is about uh, the some of the important uh, the topics which is related to the riveted joint okay so in this class uh, we discussed regarding that what is the uh, importance of the riveted joint and also we know that how what is meant by rivet and what how the riveting process will going to done this is how the riveting operation will going to done if you want to establish a tight leg proof joint between these two point okay so we'll insert a rivet okay so with a, a suitable die and with some sort of backing up bar due to some external force we'll going to establish a tight leg proof joint okay by using the rivet the main parts of the rivets which are the tail shank and head taper tail okay and head taper tail and a main body of the shank we will call it as a okay shank this is a main body of the rivet is called and there is a taper tail okay this is a taper tail okay this is a some of the important topics are caulking as well as the pull ring we discussed okay and also we discussed some of the assumptions which are made in the riveted joints and types of riveted joints these are the types of riveted joint lap joint as well as the butt joint important terms pitch back pitch 
diagonal pitch as well as the margin.